Denver Broncos offensive tackle Garrett Bowles could be on the move here for the Broncos. If he is gone, what will the Broncos do to address left tackle? We'll break that down and much more on today's brand new episode, Locked On Broncos. You are Locked On Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's happening, Broncos country? Welcome into a brand new episode of Lockdown Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you so much to all the everydayers out there. Thanks for making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day every single day. Just a reminder, you can get this podcast for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast every single day all year long. Super's favor, hit that subscribe or that follow button down below so you never miss out on all the content and coverage of your favorite team. We got you covered here. I'm Cody Rourke, Broncos reporter, covering the Broncos for Mile High Sports. Joined alongside, as always, by Sarah Bettinger. He's the site expert of their predominantly orange.com. Big week here for the Broncos as we expect a lot of roster decisions coming up. If you missed yesterday's episode of Lockdown Broncos, we have you covered there. We talked about all the potential moves that could happen but one of them that we did talk about, we have to bring to the forefront because it is something that could create a large hole, and that could be what the Broncos decide to do with Garrett Bulls. There's a strong chance that they could cut him if they don't extend him, and that creates its own wide variety of questions that we have to add, uh, answer you know, and try to figure out ourselves. A lot of big questions for this roster coming forth here as we approach free agency. As the time we're recording this, I mean, the free agency frenzy is about exactly a week away in terms of when teams can start agreeing to contracts with players. So the Broncos will want to have their ducks in a row. And some of the biggest question marks on this roster involve some of the biggest name starters, like you mentioned, Garrett Bowles, of course, a $20 million cap hit for Garrett Bowles this season and no guaranteed money left on his deal. So what does that mean? That he's going to come up in every discussion when it comes to potential cap casualties, potential trade candidate, potential extension candidate. The one thing that Garrett Bowles really isn't a, a candidate for at this point is restructure. And so what does that mean? That means that the Broncos can't go to his deal. There's no future years on the deal. This is the final year in 2024. So they can't go and say, let's kick some of this money down the road to 2025, 2026. They can't do that with Garrett Bowles. They would have to add years to the contract at this point. So when you talk about his contributions to the team, Cody, really good season in 2023. He's one of the better left tackles in the NFL, which I know that uh, that's a debatable topic among Broncos country. But I think in terms of consistency, in terms of availability, Garrett Bowles is a quality player at a very important position. When you talk about cut, trade, extend, you know, all these different things with Bowles, it really feels like everything is on the table except just letting that final year of the contract play out. Well, and I think the challenge here that Denver is facing, look, is Garrett a guy that is going to be like the top left tackle in the NFL? Probably not, right? But what you know is you're getting consistent, solid production out of him, and he has demonstrated that. He's proven that. And who out there is going to be available that, you know, if they are hitting free agency, so to speak, who out there would be a better option to bring in, right? Because there is a narrative around free agency. Well, if this player is hitting free agency, then there's something wrong, right? And this isn't the case for every player, right? Some players that are on the rookie deals, they hit the mark because they want to see where they're at, what they what type of money they can command on the market. But when you're talking about players who have already had a second contract, when they hit free agency the next time, a lot of people are like, hey, buyer beware. Like, why is he a free agent? Why is he hitting it? There's some options we're going to throw out here in today's show, but we addressed a little bit of this in yesterday's show, kind of threw a, a possibility out there. If Denver does, in fact, move on from Garrett Bowles here, Sarah, not only do you have questions at the quarterback position, you have questions at offensive tackle. Now you can address quarterback in the NFL draft, but if you do go with a rookie quarterback in round one with your 12th overall pick, what does that say? Like, does that inspire confidence in you or does it inspire confidence to people listening to the show right now that, okay, you may go into 2024 with a rookie quarterback and no solidified option at left tackle. To me, that is my biggest worry here, right? Is creating a hole to try to figure out how to get financially stable. I, I don't know if it makes sense. So to me, Sarah, the logical thing for Denver to do extend Garrett Bulls one to two years, whatever it may be. Both sides obviously have to agree to it, but if you move on from Garrett, it creates a larger hole and it makes the offensive outlook, in my opinion, more bleak. 
It does for sure. And th that's the biggest dilemma facing this team right now is, you know, you, you don't necessarily want to rob from Peter to pay Paul in, in a way, you know, you don't want to have to take from your own roster in order to add to your own roster when the Broncos already have areas that they need to address. The one thing about going to the draft is that you don't have a second round pick right now. And, and I say right now, because I guess we'll see what happens as the off season progresses, but that's that's where this becomes borderline and impossible like Sudoku puzzle for the Denver Broncos, right? It's like you you feel like you've got, okay, they could go to the draft for these positions. They could go to free agency for these. You feel like you've got it all figured out. But when you try to piece it all together without the second round pick, having to get under the salary cap in order to attack free agency, it's not like the Broncos are necessarily in a really bad position, but it's certainly not favorable it's a manageable situation but it's not really benefiting the team to be over the cap and not having a second round pick at this point it's something that with this draft class the way that it is having that second round pick would be massive so if the plan is to move on from Garrett Bowles and save that 16 million that they could save by cutting or trading him I think the option has to be trade or keep one way or another. I think the Broncos would rather keep Bulls at the $20 million cap hit than just cut him and get nothing in return. He's got too much value to just let go like that. So to me, Cody, I think we're looking at if he does go, if he's not in Denver next year, at least there will be some type of valuable draft asset coming back. There should be, right? And I think – for where Denver is at too. You think about it in the context of Russell Wilson. We all know, I think this week is going to be the release of him. There's the financial ramifications of that, right? So if you're moving on from Garrett Bowles to create salary cap space, you're just going to incur more salary cap deficit by releasing Russell Wilson. So what is the financial plan here from the Walton Penner family ownership group? What is the plan from George Payton and Sean Payton? And look, I know Denver has some developmental prospects at offensive tackle already on the roster that you and I have talked about that we like, that think that maybe, you know, hey, more time, more development. They could emerge into something, right? It's not necessarily if you get drafted first round, second round, or if you're undrafted, you can still build your own story, right? The reality is, and no offense to Demontre Jacobs, no offense to Alex Pauczewski, I don't know if that inspires confidence saying, you know what, let's roll with one of these guys for the year, and then maybe next year's NFL draft, we'll look at an option here. That just doesn't scream the confidence I think that you need for the Broncos, especially in an offense which Sean Payton is very particular about. Sean Payton is very, very stressed over and has acknowledged himself there's areas he needs to be better with. To me, I don't think that is the route that the team is going to take. So we are fixing to find out, as our good friend Gary Kubiak always used to say, and there's a lot of options on the table here. But Broncos country, we want to hear from you here on today's episode of Locked On Broncos. What do you think the Broncos should do here with Garrett Bowles? Do you think that they should extend him? Do you think that they should release him and move on? And if so, what options might they have? We want to hear from you here on the show. One path the Broncos could take in free agency if Garrett Bulls were to depart is the NFL draft. But could the Broncos look in round number one to be able to address offensive tackle? You'll get that and much more on today's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp, and a lot of us spend our lives wishing that we had more time, more time to do the things that we enjoy, spend time with the people that we love. And the question is, what else are we looking for? Time for what? If time was unlimited, how would you use it? The best way to squeeze that special thing into your schedule is to know what's important to you and to make it a priority. Therapy can help you find what matters to you so you can do more of it. That's where BetterHelp can come into the picture. I've utilized BetterHelp therapy in the past. When I first signed up, I filled out a brief questionnaire. It matched me to a therapist, and luckily my therapist and I, we vibe really well. If you don't match with your therapist, you don't have a good vibe or connection with them, you can change therapists at any time at no additional cost with BetterHelp, and she helped me connect with a lot of different tools. She helped me identify things that I could do to deal with stress, to deal with anxiety, to deal with stuff that comes up in the day-to-day. -day. That's where I found relief from BetterHelp, and it was a useful tool for me. It could be useful for you. I know several listeners of Lockdown Broncos have reached out to me and have told me that they've utilized BetterHelp, and it has been beneficial to them as well. If you're thinking of starting therapy, Give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient for you, flexible around your schedule, and best of all, it meets you where you're at. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time at no additional cost. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on today to, to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P.com slash locked on. 
The NFL draft is never a surefire thing, but in the 2024 NFL draft, the offensive tackle may be as close to a guaranteed lock as you can get in this particular class. And we're going to break down why it may make sense for the Broncos to go offensive tackle in round one, but they got to get that QB, that sticky QB situation figured out first. And I want to say thank you to every single one of you that makes Locked On Broncos your first listen of the day every single day right here on the Locked On Podcast Network where you can get your podcast free and available anywhere that you listen. And you can also watch the show on YouTube. And we appreciate every single one of you for tuning in. However, whenever and wherever you choose to do so the offensive tackle position for the Denver Broncos you kind of figured after last offseason the signing of Mike McGlinchey to a five-year deal at the right tackle position felt like there was going to be at least a, a little bit of short term you know kind of just like a guarantee on the roster there but I don't think anybody realized quite how short term that could be with the Garrett Bowles decision coming up here in 2024 ultimately leading to this idea could the Broncos go offensive tackle in round one? We made a lot about the fact that this team had formal interviews with all the top quarterback prospects in the draft. But, Cody, they had top the top offensive tackles in this class, and there are many. The Broncos had formal interviews with just about every single one of them. I'm very intrigued by this possibility, and, and maybe this means veteran quarterback. I don't know what it necessarily means, but at 12 overall, you could get a staple at the left tackle position. I would be worried if Denver, just if they just went into the combine and met with primarily skilled players and just the QBs and didn't really look at offensive tackle because I think you look at OT, a rookie contract gives you more flexibility overall, right? You have cost control there. And obviously at one point the bill is going to come due, whether or not that player is going to be extended or not. But I think where Denver is at here, uh, Ian Cummings of pro football network, obviously a good friend of mine, love Ian. He's a hard worker spent this past week at the NFL combine does tremendous work over there. Pro football network.com. He just dropped a mock draft here for the Broncos this week. And he has them taking Amarius Mims, obviously offensive tackle out of Georgia with the 12th overall pick. Now, for me, when I saw that, I was like, that's a great pick. I'm happy with that pick. There's the word, right? But but what are they doing at quarterback? What is the plan at QB for them? So that was kind of like un unaddressed in that situation here. But I think it's interesting, the timing of this, obviously considering the deadline that is coming up for Garrett Bowles. Mims would be a great pick for the Broncos. I think he'd be a good fit here in Sean Payton's offense. But for me, I have a question here, like – Denver could trade down, right? You you alluded to that a little bit in segment one. What if Denver were to trade down from pick number 12, right? And maybe get like a back end, like trade with the team, back end round one pick, whatever it may be, and then maybe acquire a second round pick in there, right? I'm not saying like a premier second round pick, maybe even the back end of that, just so one of those teams could move up. I feel like if Denver knows that they can get a quarterback and an offensive tackle in that same situation, I'd be on board with that. I would too. I mean, really, that that would be an ideal situation. And then you'd have people asking questions like, why would the Broncos, if they were going after this quarterback, why would they not just take him at 12? Why would they trade down and risk not being able to take him? Do they really love him as a franchise QB? Those questions could pop up. That'd be, that'd be the only reason I would say, hey, you want to inspire a fan base and the confidence that you're backing this quarterback as your franchise QB. That may be the one thing that prevents the fan base from buying what you're selling in that regard. Mm -hmm. But ideal in an ideal world, if we're putting together a draft class, that's how you would do it, right? And you would manipulate the board in such a way and there may be options to do that the philadelphia eagles the line of communication with the denver broncos is very open i believe they have the 25th or some something like that pick in the first round 23rd 25th and they have multiple second round choices that could be kind of that ideal range that you talked about so that's certainly not off the table green bay packers they pick in the 20s they have two second round picks they could be a trade candidate with the denver broncos and allow you to potentially cash in on the depth of this class at your biggest positions of need at 12 overall, Cody, I don't think there's any shortage of options. And when you look at Notre Dame's Joe Alt, when you talk about, you know, Taliese Fuaga from Oregon State, Troy Fatanu from Washington, like you mentioned, Amarius Mims from Georgia, who absolutely is one of the most physically imposing guys that you'll ever see. J.C. Latham, so many tackle prospects in this class that could intrigue the Broncos. And some of them have guard versatility as well. So you're not talking about 
well, this guy's a, a right tackle only, or he's a left tackle only, or he's a guard only. These guys can play anywhere. Versatility is the name of the game. And so as you're assembling these potential targets for the Broncos in your own personal mock drafts that you're doing as, as listeners of the show, I think offensive tackle has to be in the mix, especially if these Kirk Cousins rumors are have any feet to them, especially if the Broncos could go after somebody, maybe throw a mid-round pick at the Patriots for Mac Jones, something like that within the realm of realism may not be everybody's cup of tea as it, as listeners of the show can't see Cody's face as I say the name Mac Jones, but there's so <laughs> many different options there, especially at 12 overall, Cody. I feel like you're getting top-tier athletes, guys with experience, guys who can play right away. It's a great position. Unfortunately, the Broncos have that pesky QB situation to take care of first. Did you see at the NFL scouting combine? I can't remember who it was. I believe it was an offensive tackle, but he can write with his left hand and he can write with his right hand. He's ambidextrous. Like, I, I don't know who that was, but that wow. might be interesting because then I think maybe, okay, well, if this guy, you know what they say, like offensive linemen have gone on the record saying like, if you go to wipe, like if you're right-handed trying to wipe yep. with your left hand feels very weird, which I look, I've never tried to wipe with my left hand. I'm a right-handed guy. <laughs> But the reality is, like, if you have a guy who's ambidextrous, like, you could be very, very versatile in how you play one of those players. So we'll see. And uh, if you're ambidextrous, you've tried that. I mean, you're sure to let us know if you want to. But I, I think that Denver, this is an opportunity, right? And I've seen a lot of people, I think a lot of the conversation, I think a lot of fans are cognizant of this as well on Twitter, especially is that this offensive tackle class does present some opportunity for Denver. Now, I think maybe the bigger question when we get into our analysis of, how the draft is viewed. Remember every year, like we have an idea, okay, this guy might be a second round prospect. This guy might be a first round prospect. Particularly, we see that all the time with quarterbacks and receivers, and then it ends up being very different. Offensive tackle is tough because I think you look for like the blue collar guys, like the old Tristan Wirfs. Like that was an exciting pick. I mean, several years ago, it's an exciting prospect. I think you and I even did a, a show and saying, hey, the Broncos should trade up and try to get Tristan Wirfs at one point. For us, we just don't know how the draft is actually going to play out. And I think that's one of the more exciting things, right? We can do all the mock drafts possible. We love when fans send us their mock drafts, but how is it really going to go? And are there going to be maybe guys in late round two? Now, gr granted, Denver to have a round two pick last year, Sarah. You know what they did, though? They traded up into round two to go get Marvin Mims. So that might even still be in the realm of possibility for them here once again. I think George's comments last week about the back end of this draft not being very strong, but the front end being very good. I found that to be very interesting and maybe giving a little bit of insight into how they're viewing it. Because if they traded up as many times as they did last year to go get, obviously, uh, Marvin Mims, to go and get Riley Moss, to me that tells me that, hey, Denver is invested in being aggressive here in the NFL draft. And there's also a couple of guys they could trade on draft. Day. I know Jerry Judy's name's a name that's been thrown out there. So by any means necessary, I think their plan is to go acquire more capital. And I think they could get their quarterback. They could get an offensive tackle. I think there's so many different options, but what path is it going to be? To me, that's the most intriguing thing about this offseason. And free agency is going to determine that Ooh. course, right? Uh, obviously, you Next addressed... Week. You know, typical needs in free agency, you go to the NFL draft and you kind of hope that you have the flexibility to not have to telegraph your picks with needs. And there may be certain situations like quarterback and offensive tackle where the Broncos could acquire somebody in free agency and still draft somebody high. And I think that's a very realistic possibility given some of the ages of guys that are available and things like that. But Cody, I think this free agent tackle class it's, it's certainly not on par with drafting somebody in terms of excitement, but if you have to replace Garrett Bowles via trade, I do think there's some names in free agency. They, they may be expensive, some of them. They may have injury history, some of them, but hey, that's how guys get to free agency, right? I think that could be an interesting wrinkle in this whole conversation in terms of the Broncos potentially being able to capitalize on this incredible tackle draft class. Sarah teed it up perfectly. We're going to dive into some free agency options at left tackle that the Broncos could take a look at, including a, a prominent name that was just released by the Dallas Cowboys. We'll break it all down here on today's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos. Today's Locked on Broncos podcast is brought to you by our friends over there at FanDuel Sportsbook, America's number one sportsbook. Get buckets today with your first bet 
on FanDuel. Because right now, new customers who sign up get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. So if you sign up today as a brand new customer, let's say you go on to the next Denver Nuggets game, you place a $5 bet on the Nuggets money line, or if you believe Nicole Jokic is going to get a triple-double, you could do it on a player prop. You place $5 on that, and your bet wins. You're going to get $150 in bonus bets. You can bet on all of your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same game parlays, exclusive props, and more, especially as the postseason push is coming. Everyone's trying to figure out where they're going to fit in the seedings between the first seed, the eighth seed. You're going to have the teams battling to try to get a spot into the play-in, and that makes it all more exciting with the FanDuel Sportsbook app. Check it out today. Just visit FanDuel.com slash lockdown. Once again, that's FanDuel.com slash lockdown and shoot your shot. FanDuel is the official sportsbook partner of the NBA. Could the Broncos be interested in Tyron Smith and NFL free agency if they do decide to move on from Garrett Bowles? That is a possibility here as we look at every opportunity that the Broncos could have to upgrade their roster, whether that be free agency, whether that be the NFL draft. Just want to say thank you so much to everybody in Broncos country, all the everydayers out there for making us your first listen of the day. Every single day, we got you covered all year long, Broncos country, because for the true fan, there is never an off season. You can get Lockdown Broncos here on YouTube, or you can get us for free wherever you get your podcast. So do us a favor, subscribe or follow so you never miss out on what's going on with your favorite team. Sarah and I will break down every single angle of this team possible to give you the best objective coverage of all things Denver Broncos. Tyron Smith is a free agent here, Sarah, and obviously uh, anytime a, a prominent name, a veteran option at a potential position of need that the Broncos may have, I know the fan base, their ears go pew, they, they perk up a little bit. You hear a lot of sound effects. You see a lot of excitement on social media. But then it goes back, I think, to maybe what I said a little bit earlier. Like sometimes when these guys hit free agency, it's you ask the question why. Tyron Smith is a very intriguing option, obviously, having been released by the Dallas Cowboys. But then I went and saw that as well, and I was looking through the replies, and I saw a lot of Cowboys analysts talking about it. Good player, obviously a veteran guy, but the cost in terms of what they were paying him was pretty high. And on top of that, his availability from an injury standpoint has led to some questions is this something that Denver could maybe look into in your opinion? It's worth calling the agent, right? It's worth calling and seeing what is he asking for? How many years? What does he want? Because Tyron Smith, when he plays, is one of the best still in the game today, Cody. I got the pleasure of covering some of the Cowboys last season uh, with the, the Landry hat over there in the fan-sided network. And Tyron Smith was a guy that early on in the year, everybody's like, all right, well, he's definitely gone after the season. You know, his availability hasn't been there, things like that. But when he got back out onto the field, and I tell you, he was dominant. He was dominant, and he did everything well. Run blocking, pass protection. He's still playing at an elite level, but the question is, how often is he going to be available to you? Are you going to be paying $2 million per game that he plays? You know, things like that. I don't know if that's going to be the case. That's a hefty price to pay. It's a hefty risk to take. That is the risk that you take in free agency with guys who get there. Guys who get to the open market typically do have health concerns. Even the last time, remember the Broncos signed a very, very high profile former Dallas Cowboys player in free agency. Why did DeMarcus Ware get to free agency in the first place? Why did the Cowboys let him go? Because he couldn't stay on the field enough. And the Broncos saw that firsthand. You were willing to live with it. Different situation, though. Can they go after Tyron Smith? Maybe. Will they? I don't know. It depends on, I guess, Cody, what happens with Garrett Bowles here. But he would be the number one option if you go to free agency. Well, I think maybe a promising thing that we could look at based on a trend, right? Because the year prior, Denver on the injury side, they were decimated. It was really, really bad. The Broncos, after revamping their training staff, after revamping a lot of different areas of their operation, they saw a decrease in injuries. They saw guys that were you know, previously like really banged up stay healthy. So could that be like, okay, we understand this isn't necessarily a low risk, high reward. This is a high risk, high reward potential type of move. Are the Broncos in a position right now to make a high risk move here? To me, that's a question. I think that's where Sean and George are obviously going to be in. I know Sean pays attention to a lot of this stuff, and he'll probably be monitoring the market as well in terms of like, all right, hey, he hits the market. We understand that maybe this guy you know, doesn't have the right history, but maybe he can come here, which leads, I think, to a lot of other guys like Andrews Pete, for example. Sean Payton's got familiarity with him. You also look at Makai Becton. That's a name you threw out last week here on Lockdown Broncos where I feel like we could talk about the New York Jets 
they're the Jets, right? In terms of the environment, they offensively under Nathaniel Hackett didn't have a lot of room. I know Aaron Rodgers was a big advocate last year, contrary to what you feel or think about Aaron. It was a big advocate for Makai Becton, and Makai Becton needed a lot of support. A guy who's been banged up with injuries through the first couple of years of his career, still young enough, I think, to have a chance to turn it around, could be the perfect reclamation-type project for the Broncos. And I think, Cody, something that you just mentioned is absolutely critical. With these free agents, is it a massive recruiting tool for the Broncos to point to last year and guys that had struggled with injuries in the past who were able to stay on the field in Denver, you know, and point to their training staff and say, we've got the, the hamstring God, you know, <laughs> leading our, our, <laughs> our training staff. And, and look, you're not going to struggle with all these things in Denver. And we may not have your whole medical history, things like that, but we have the people in place, the procedures in place, the things in place to be able to keep you on the field consistently. And that could be a huge recruiting tool for somebody like, you know, whether it's Tyron Smith, Mekhi Becton, any number of positions for this team, I think you call up that agent and you say, look at the way that we were able to get these guys healthy this past season and look at the way we were able to keep them healthy. Broncos had very few season ending injuries, like a few fluke injuries happen in training camp, things like that. But especially compared to years prior, that team was healthy for most of the year. And that's why they were able to go on such a run like they did. So to me, that factor that you just pointed out, if it's it could get guys to sign cheaper yeah. in Denver to say, hey, we could at least you could rehab your value here over the next year or two and and get a big money contract. And because you'll be able to stay on the field could be an really underrated recruiting tool for this team. And a part of me is also wondering as well, like how might the NFLPA report card stuff that just came out last week, how does that impact? Like if I'm a player, if I'm an agent of several teams and it's like, all right, hey, I want to go play for the Chargers, but it's like, wait a minute, they make me pay for childcare. They they do this or it's like, oh, you want to go play for the Chiefs? So it's like, oh, well, they don't care about renovating locker room. Their ownership, they graded badly in a lot of areas, but they're defending champions. Luckily, they have Andy Reid. Part of me wonders if that factors into maybe what can happen here. I just think for Denver, and, and I'll say this again, and, and look, Broncos fans might hate me for it, but there's a word that I'm going to continue to use that I think is so important. And this is a question. Can Sean Payton build this? Is the Broncos environment from a roster standpoint, inside the locker room, from a cultural standpoint, is it in a place where you can bring in somebody entirely from the outside? Can they fit in and maybe maximize that? Can they improve your culture even more? Can they improve your area of performance and where you may need it from a positional standpoint? To me, that is a huge question, and I don't know if Denver's environment is there yet. I can't answer whether it is or whether it isn't. It's relatively unknown because we expect there to be, as Sean Payton said, the illusion of flipping the chess piece over and then really trying to assemble the pieces and trying to figure out what it looks like. I don't know if Denver's environment is there, but I think with how players graded out Payton, I think that there's a belief that, hey, they're in a much better environment than they were in 2022, much better environment than they were in 2021, even though I think our outlook in the offseason after 2021 was actually pretty solid. We're like, hey, like Denver almost made the playoffs with this roster with Drew Locke at quarterback and with Teddy Bridgewater, those guys going through it, but they had a really a, a really good defense. So you have an emerging guy in Pat Sertan. Now you have questions of the other sort of, can Sean Payton continue to maximize this? I think if he was able to get three more wins out of this roster that they had last year, Sarah, I think that he can build an environment that is sustainable to what players need to succeed on the field. Some players may not like it, but that's that might have to be what Denver does in order to get back to winning. That's really coaching and management of any kind, isn't it? You may not always like the way that you're being led. You may not always agree with the leader that's in place, but shoot, if they're proven over time and they've been able to have a lot of success at the NFL level, that speaks volumes. And just listening to draft prospects, Cody, talk about meeting the Broncos coaching staff, just listening to what they had to say about the, the gravitas of meeting Sean Payton and being in the same room as him and talking football with him like, I think the perception is really skewed between what players and prospective NFL players think of Sean Payton and, and how they view him as a potential head coach or their, you know, their head coach versus what fans and media say about Sean Payton as far as the type of person that he is. He may not always be, uh, you know, he, he may not always come into the, the press room for you guys and hand out a, a flower before every no. single press conference. He may come across <laughs> as a jerk sometimes. But look, the guy's a great NFL 
coach. And I think players understand that and they know that that coaching staff in Denver is going to be able to maximize their talent. I think that aspect of this whole conversation looms very, very large as we get to the offseason. Well, Broncos country, we want to hear from you. If Denver goes the free agency route, is Tyron Smith a, a player you would like the Broncos to maybe pursue? Let us know wherever you get your podcast as you listen or watch Lockdown Broncos every single day all year long. We do anticipate that there is going to be some house cleaning stuff here this week. If you missed yesterday's episode of Lockdown Broncos, we highlight some of the moves that Denver could make this week. But if and when those moves happen, we'll also have you covered here live on the show here. We're going to continue. If that is not the case, we're going to continue looking at potential free agency options as we look at positions of need on the Broncos defensive side of the ball. And we'll take a gander. Who are some names that Denver could bring in to bolster the interior defensive line? You'll get that much more in tomorrow's brand new episode, Lockdown Broncos.